بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In this section 4.6 of A New Approach to Islamic Economics, we discuss how living in a market society conditions our minds and hearts. Living in a market society desensitizes us to the strong conflict between market mechanisms and social mechanisms. Pogliani describes this conflict by saying that in a traditional society, markets are embedded within uh, the social mechanisms, whereas in a market society, the markets dominate and social relationships are embedded within the market. In a recent update, Carrier talks about how in traditional societies, people either produce what they need or they exchange gifts with their neighbors. All of these transactions produce connectivity with the earth and also connectivity with it, it, uh, the, these build social relationships as opposed to market mechanisms which are anonymous and create um, either adversarial relationships or non-committal indifference. Because we have been desensitized to it, it's helpful to give a specific illustration of the strong conflict between the social and the market mechanisms. And one uh, good illustration is uh, blood donation. We would all happily volunteer to help save lives. Uh, and this is how blood drives uh, incentivize people. But what would happen if we are offered money instead of for, for the blood? Uh, as uh, this has been tried, an entirely different class of donors, drug addicts, poor people emerge. Nobody wants to sell their blood. And so these two incentives, money and social, are opposed to each other. Economists, including Nobel laureates, failed to understand this. They thought that if we offered money in addition to social motivation, this would increase the amount of blood donations. But it doesn't work that way. If we are being offered money and we are also told that, yes, this will help save lives, we think of it as a market transaction and we uh, don't... Um, enter into it. So offering money actually reduces the amount of blood available and the quality of the blood available. Because of this conflict between markets and society, market society cannot come into existence without a battle against the traditional social values. And uh, things which are considered sacred in a traditional society become reduced to commodities for sale on the market. For example, the prime example is the labor market in which human lives are still considered not for uh, sale are actually reduced to objects for sale in the labor market. We sell a part of our lives for money and this cheapens human lives and also increases the value and worth of money in our eyes. This replacement of social mechanisms by market mechanisms causes great harm to society and Polanyi provides a history of how markets won this battle against society. Polanyi says that we cannot understand the history of uh, how capitalism came to be without understanding this conflict and without understanding that markets seek to expand and the society resists such expansion. So why do markets seek to expand? This is a question we haven't dealt with. Uh, it is some internal dynamics of markets which uh, makes uh, growth an imperative. And we have uh, discussed why society resists such expansion because it is uh, markets damage uh, natural society. So uh, to understand history, we have to look at both the forces which lead markets to expand and the forces which lead society to resist and counter such movements towards expansion. One of the key elements of Polanyi's analysis of capitalism is that markets require three artificial commodities. Natural commodities are those which are produced in factories or grown on farms, but these are not, these artificial commodities, land, labor, and money are not produced by our labor. Land is the environment, we live on this land, it is our habitat, and we have a symbiotic relationship with it. Labor is actually the stuff of from which our lives are made and not for sale. And money is actually a social convention which is uh, put into place by governments and uh, supported by uh, markets. And so none of these are commodities in any natural sense. 
treating land as a commodity cheapens it and uh, reduces it from the metaphor of Mother Earth to just a commodity for exploitation. And this change in our attitude towards uh, the Earth is one of the primary causes of the current environmental crisis. So when we start thinking of labor as a commodity, then human beings become human resources for sale. This increases the value of money and cheapens our lives. Um, uh, because it is so uh, built into us to think in this way, and we think of our own life, the value of our life as the amount that we will get when we sell it in the labor market, the amount of money we make is a status of our worth. Uh, we have to reflect on how unnatural this is. Uh, and uh, we have to uh, free our minds from this uh, illusion of capitalism that our lives are for sale. And this is one of the most important ways in which capitalism shapes our minds and hearts by making the money the goal of our life and making us think that our lives are for sale. Money itself is a social institution. It is not like uh, intrinsically valuable, the pieces of paper we hold, have no value except that which is given to it by the government and by the social conventions. So when we think of it, start thinking of it as a piece of paper, then we are able to value it for its true worth and uh, regain control of our lives. But the market con uh, society conditions us to think of uh, the pursuit of this paper as the goal and the primary important purpose of our lives. So we can conclude this lecture by noting how capitalism conditions our minds, our hearts, by basically using the market to isolate us from society. All our interaction takes place through markets instead of through gift giving and other mechanism which uh, increase our social connections. And this leads to loneliness and uh, awareness of this effect of capitalism leads to the possibility of liberation. We have to realize that our lives are precious beyond the possibility of purchase. We have to realize that we are unique. There has been no one like us before and no one like us will come into existence after. The opportunities we face are unique. We are not interchangeable parts in a machine for production of capitalism. Similarly, the planet we live on is unique and the gifts given to us by God in the form of the forests and the seas and the mountains and the animals and the plants, they are irreplaceable. If we wipe out a species, we cannot recreate it for any amount of money and it takes century and millennia to produce these plants and uh, uh, species. And similarly, the money that we value is a substitute, is a market substitute for the trust uh, building genuine trust in social relationships provides deep satisfaction which is unavailable in a market economy. Subhana Rabbik Rabbil Izzati Amma Yasifun Wa Salaman Al-Mursaleen Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen